Hello everyone, happy spring and welcome to the Kushmeric Connection. Uh, we're filming today uh, from the Workers' Credit Union Studios at FATV, uh, who's such a, an incredible uh, community resource and asset, so thank you to FATV for continuing to host us. Joining me today is a newly elected uh, and newly serving uh, city councilor in the city of Fitchburg. You are from Ward 6, correct? Correct, Ward 6 City Council. That's right. Wonderful. All right. So uh, joining us today is Derek Cruz. Derek, thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks for having me, Mike. I appreciate you are it. no stranger to the FATV studios. No, yeah. no I'm becoming a regular these days. Uh, <laughs> It's fun. It's uh, it's a good way to interact with the community and to um, to be a part of the community. So it's it's nice. Absolutely, yeah. uh, fellow host here. I guess a colleague at FATV. That's uh, right. Uh, yes. Inside Fitchburg. Inside Fitchburg. That's right. With Lynn Butland. Yeah. Wonderful. It's a, it's a great program. So if you haven't seen it, make sure you tune in. Uh, and, and so, Derek, tell us a little bit about yourself. You're you're about four or five months on the on the council at the time of uh, at the time of airing, and uh, tell us uh, you know a little bit about your background. What made you get involved? Sure, sure. Um, if you haven't heard already, I'm born and raised in Fitchburg. Um, spent almost my whole life here. Um, at some point, I think you know a lot of people uh, during the pandemic uh, were frustrated, and I was certainly one of those people um, by things that I was seeing on a national level from all sides, not you know right or left or anything like that. It was, it was just, I was sick of it. And I got to a point, it was either I shut this TV off and I get involved, or I shut this TV off and I go live in a bubble on, somewhere on a lake. <laughs> so I decided to get involved. Um, I ran first time election and, uh, and here we are. Actually, the, f the first thing I actually did uh, was call you. You were running <laughs> for office, um, you were running for state rep, and you're a Democrat, and I think I called you and I said, I'd like to dip my toe in the water and volunteer and see what this is like. The water ended up being pretty warm, and here, here we are now. <laughs> I love it. No, yeah, I remember you calling, and, and I'm like, I, I, all right, I, I, I want to find something that's not just holding a sign <laughs> or knocking on a door, and, and um, you, you're, you're an incredible help on the, on the campaign trail. And I, I remember what really struck me the most was one day after um, knocking doors and holding signs, um, I remember we got into like a little heated political exchange and you were pushing me really hard on a couple of issues and I, I thought I can be pushy. I've already <laughs> That's a good thing though. You I'm have getting conviction. that reputation uh, of being a little bit pushy, but I don't really care cuz I'm here to get stuff done. Uh, that's, right. that's the point. Uh, it's important to to be a little bit uh, Look, I, I can take it if someone wants to push back at me, I don't mind. I don't take it personally. Right. We're having an ideological conversation. These things are so very very important. Right, like we have to have these conversations. We have to push each other a little bit because that's, that's right. how we have progress. Is we, we push forward. Uh, so yeah, so I don't mind. Uh, I don't mind a little pushback and a little push. And same here. It was refreshing, and it was uh, <laughs> you weren't going to back down, and you weren't going to say, "Oh, sure, Mike, you're you're right." And <laughs> and uh, it was, it was a great exchange, and I remember just feeling like refreshed. Of all right, we had we had a difference. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a productive conversation. I I think he just changed my viewpoint on on the issue and and now we're going to move on and mm -hmm. and um and we're going to go agree on some things we're going to disagree on others and absolutely I, I think that's the beauty of politics and that's how it's supposed to work right 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 and it's it's important also because you know we have to share our experiences one, with one another because we don't all have the same experiences so something that i have could be very personal to me and i could have a completely different experience with something and then someone else could have their experience with something and you know so often we're we're, we're trying to get to the same point we just have different degrees of how we should get there. Uh, so it's, it's important to share those experiences and figure out the best way of getting, uh, getting forward, moving forward. Well said, and, and I think, you know, so often in, in municipal government and in state government, um, I, I think how we as elected officials develop or shape policy or, or vote on an issue is, is through the lens of, of how our constituents um, express their concerns too and, and the concerns that they bring forward to us mm -hmm. uh, because we can only see and experience so much. We rely mm -hmm. on our constituents to, to raise their hand and say, hey, I'm concerned about this or I have this issue, whether it's a pothole or, or taxes, right, um, right? right. From, the, from the the kind of the most granular issue to the, the largest um, mm -hmm. you know, intersection with government. And mm -hmm. so uh, I remember my, my first you know, year or two on the council. It was a blur, but it was high volume and hearing from a lot of constituents. How, how has that, uh, this first year been for you thus far? It's been, uh, it's been incredibly rewarding because you get to see things, like you said, through the lens of your constituents and through others and develop a better understanding and make better decisions, I think. Um, you know, it's never going to be perfect, but um, like I said, you know, when I was, I was watching all this TV, you get, 
these sound bites. You get these ridiculous sound bites from these talking heads who are just such blowhards sometimes, <laughs> and it can be so frustrating because then you hear these sound bites on the street and you think, you haven't seen the lens that others have. That's right. You know what I mean? You, you just, you're getting this one particular thing from somebody telling you this, but it's, it's, it's half of a truth. And sometimes it's just a flat out lie. Right. Uh, so that's been the most rewarding thing. And it's, it's challenging, like it really is challenging because you want to help everyone, you know what I mean? But, but you, you come to a point where you understand that, you know, let's take it out uh, the potholes. You get a, a street paved, beautiful street paved all the way over. That's what everybody wants, right? We want our streets <laughs> paved. That's right. Well, we've got one on Battel Street and the, the speeding on Battel, it's, it's a raceway and there are accidents every month. And the, and the people on Battel Street are so rightly frustrated now because uh, they fear for their, their safety. They fear for the children's safety on the, on the playground on Battel Street and the school there. Um, so everything has, everything has a catch-22. So it can be challenging, but it's incredibly rewarding at the same time, especially when you do get the opportunity to help someone. It's, it's nice. I, I, I laugh because I remember, and, and Dr. Babino, if he's, if he's listening, I remember him, him contacting me too. It was the same issue of, you know, everybody wants their road paved, um, and, and um, you know, it's the second, uh, the second the road gets paved, then you see the speeding issue. Right. Um, right. And, um, you, you know, I remember thinking like, Wow. All right. There's there there is another side to this issue now. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, yes. I think we all agree. We want to get the roads paved. And we yes. want all of our roads to be in great condition. And um, we're going to. And we're going those to. Listen. Where's the camera? We're going to get it done. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And it's that that state municipal partnership, right? Exactly. Uh, we're going to get yeah. it to get done together. Yeah. Um, you know, it's an uphill battle, but we're going to get there. Right. And uh, but I think to your point too, it's you know when we look at issues like potholes or street lights or or anything else right it, it's it's not a red or blue issue it's it's an issue and residents right. don't care which side of the political spectrum gets the answer done right. uh, gets it gets the the problem solved they just want to know that it gets solved and right. uh, and it's nice to be able to put that aside and i think thankfully at at the municipal level the, those national politics and the red and the blue they don't factor in it's just about they, yeah. um they go know. away pretty quickly yes they do you know um, and and credit to my colleagues in the council because you know, in my limited time here, I've, I really haven't seen it. I haven't seen those sort of national politics divide. And it's been uh, something else that I've learned very quickly is uh, when you get to the local level and you see just how many people are working as hard as they are, yeah. it's so refreshing. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's just really great to see all of the people working as hard as they do and as care as much as they do. And it really, uh, anyone, uh, that's really what I really stress to people who are thinking about it because it can be daunting to to take on that task of public service, but when you get there, it, it's incredibly rewarding. You, you're absolutely right. I'm always uh, struck leaving City Hall on like a Friday night. Um, you know, if you if you're there late, um, I've left a couple of times, six six thirty, and you see you pass by uh, all of these offices still lit up. Mm -hmm. You know, there's still employees working. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at six seven eight o'clock at night sometimes. Right. Um, not because they have to, because they want to, mm -hmm. and because they take pride in the work that they do. And that's happening across the board, not just those in the office. You know, you see it with the DPW and our public safety employees and, Absolutely. Um, you know, the, the water, water department. They, they take pride in their work uh, and they truly want, um, it's their community too. And, mm -hmm. and they want to see, they want to see the issue solved and addressed and, right. and they, uh, they bend over backwards to accommodate too. Right. And that right. was always the, that was one of the, the most pleasant surprises for me is, is really getting to know the number of municipal employees when I s first began as a city councilor. It is, it's, it's, uh, it really is, it's, it's enlightening and it's refreshing and it's, uh, it's a pleasure to be a part of. So, you know, I guess, um, how, has, how has your perspective changed since, um, since going from from being a civilian to, to being on the on the council, and and what are you um, what are you hoping to, to do more of as as you move through your your first term? Well, um, you know, I'm a ward councilor, so it's constituent service. That's the most important thing. Yeah. I've got to be available. I've got to be there. Um, and I guess you know, like I said, what what I said before about what I've learned is, um, you know, the, the amount of effort and hard work that goes into it, and, and also the the way in which things need to get done. You know, sort of the complications that could arise. Everybody, everybody thinks, well, why, can, why can't they just get it done? You know, and I'm doing my best to just get it done. I really am. But yeah. there, there's a way that it has, to, it has to get done. You know, so learning that has been a, kind of the curve uh, for me. Um, and uh, you know, the process, it, sure. can, it can be very, 
bureaucratic process, but it's an important process because things need to get done properly. Right. So that's why we have these processes. So that's been a, a little bit of a learning curve for me because, like I said, I, I was very frustrated. You yeah. know, it's like, why, why can't we just do this? And I think a lot of people feel that way. Um, but it's, the, it's getting The deliberative done. process can be a, it's methodical for a reason because, mm -hmm. to your point, it, if it gets done wrong, it, it can take you know, three, six, 12 months to, to correct it and, right. and to if move you're forward. Lucky. If you're lucky. If you're lucky. You're absolutely you know, right. if you, well, one bad long-term decision sets a city back a long time. So right. it's important that we make these decisions deliberately and we make the right ones for our city. So uh, just a few months into your, um, into your new role uh, as, a, uh, as a ward counselor, some tragedy struck um, close to home. Not mm -hmm. just figuratively, uh, literally your next door, um, the, the residence and apartment complex next door to you mm -hmm. um, caught on fire, displacing uh, more than 60 residents. Uh, and so you saw that tragedy on your doorstep. And I think as a, as a new city councilor, uh, it would have been easy to say, you know, take a step back and say, I'm going to rely on the, the fire department um, and the other officials to um, to do their role, but but you dove into action um, in a really powerful and meaningful way. Tell us a little bit about um, that experience. Sure. Uh, like, again, another learning experience, 100%. Um, the fire happened on a Saturday, the second fire. There was two fires that weekend in, in my ward. The second was the, was the apartment fire that displaced, uh, it was 36 residents for an extended period of time. Initially, it was about 60, but uh, so quite a few moved back in uh, within a few days. Um, and I, I didn't know what to do. I really didn't. Uh, I had no clue. Um, and I was waiting. I said, Monday morning, I'm going to make some calls. I'm going to figure out how I can get involved. Uh, and then Sunday morning, I got a call from emergency management services in Lemonster. And they said, uh, we need some help. Yeah. And I, I said, OK, let's do it. Uh, what do you need? Um, but it was, uh, it was a lot of state. I didn't really do anything. It was a lot of, of just kind of observing and learning and, and just being there to support uh, the survivors and just let them know that I was a resource for them. But uh, what was really a silver lining for me was seeing uh, not only the Fitchburg Fire Department for their first response, um, li literally save lives, uh, but then you know to, to see it go into the hands of Lemonster Emergency Services, who and the Red and the Red Cross, who uh, who do that sort of secondary response of you know we've got these these survivors, uh, many of them have to find a new place to live, have lost everything. Um, and, and they don't know what to do. They don't know where to go. Much, right. much like myself, I didn't know what to do or where to go. Um, but the, the volunteers at Lemonster Emergency Management, they had the answers for them. Um, they were there to literally hold their hand with the Red Cross and say, it's going to be OK. We're here for you. You know, Here's what we do next. Here's how we recoup some of your lost items. Here's Red Cross literally gives the survivors $500 on a debit card right away for them hotels or food or clothes. So you know, to see these incredible volunteers at work, um, that's, that's where all the credit lies with these volunteers. They, they cooked them breakfast. You know, it had, the fire happened early in the morning, so they cooked them breakfast. They held their hands. They clothed them and yeah. kept them warm. And, and the Red Cross was there to do the same. Um, so it's it, really a Herculean effort to see these, the nonprofit community yeah. uh, and government agencies step up. And I, right. and I think uh, you said you didn't do anything, but I, I say that's the work of uh, a truly great elected official. and, and um, that's exactly what government's role is in that situation, is, is helping to coordinate the services and bring everyone together to find a meaningful solution mm -hmm. uh, and step up to support um, those residents who need the help. And mm -hmm. that's exactly what you did. And, um, you. and uh, I'm excited just for that, that same collaborative approach across the board uh, on every issue. So uh, I'm excited for the, for the future of, of Fitchburg and, and the Fitchburg City Council. Uh, so Derek Cruz, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate it a lot. Thanks, thanks for your time. Absolutely. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. That's fast.
Excellent opening move. We played right. this opening uh, lines for the bishop and many, the queen. Ten-year-old Alice Lee. Let's see a photo of Alice Lee. So she plays H3. Okay. And we were thinking mainly it's to make Luft, they call yeah, it, Luft. German for air. At the age of eight, he was also able to play blindfold, but most of his exhibitions were where he had sight of the board. Right. And he usually played between 15 and 20 players. Yes, I think taking with the queen. How did Carissa respond to uh, bishop c4? She plays knight f6, attacking the pawn. Um, Jennifer's pawn. Hello and welcome back. Uh, next, uh, we have a guest who is uh, is no stranger to me, um, and uh, and I think soon no stranger to uh, to so many across our community. Uh, it's Jackie Mara Issa, and uh, she is a senior at Fitchburg High School. And uh, you have been interning in my office uh, for, for much of this academic year yeah. and, uh, and soon to be graduating. So welcome to the show. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. So tell people a little bit about yourself. You're, you're a senior in, at Fitchburg High, but yeah. tell us a little bit about what that experience has been like the, the past few years. Um, you know, being in high school is very interesting. I've been exposed to a lot of different people. And the whole overall experience of being in high school has just been really fun, especially the football games when, you know, COVID kind of, you know, set us back a little bit, but I'm glad that in-person learning is back again and I'm able to see my friends and, you know, enjoy my senior year. A lot of the in-person activities and actually back to full hallways and right. seeing friends and th that must be nice to actually sit in some crowded stands and, and yeah. get back to playing sports in person too, right? Exactly. So speaking of sports, you're, you're an athlete at Fitchburg High as well, right? Yes, um, I've been playing volleyball for the past four years and I became the volleyball captain of the varsity team my senior year, last fall. And apart from sports, I've also been heavily involved with the marching band. Great. Um, I started the marching band my eighth grade year and I fell in love with it, so I continued on um, throughout high school and I became drum major <laughs> senior year too. So yeah, that's amazing. I'm I'm actually learning something new. This is <laughs> this is great. Uh, so it, that, that's unusual. You don't typically hear a varsity athlete also be involved in the marching band. Um, yeah, that, that's great for you to see both sides of it too. Yeah, of the I like wanted to break the stereotype between like being a nerd and <laughs> being an athlete. So I became both. That's that, that's amazing. Um, and so, uh, how many students are involved in the marching band? Um, over the years, uh, our numbers have kind of dwindled, but Currently, we have, I'd say, 30 students right now. That's and amazing. Wow. It's mostly like the freshman class and sophomore class, too. The senior class, we're very small. It's only three of us. You know, that's but, great, though. That means yeah. that, means that uh, with each year, there's that possibility and opportunity for it to continue growing. And exactly. There's a strong pipeline. Of course. Yeah, that, that, that's wonderful. Yeah. So, uh, how about how about your work on um, uh, within the the Fitchburg High community? I know you're, you're involved in, in so much more. <laughs> yeah. Tell us a little bit about um, the the different initiatives you've been working on. Um, so, recently, I started the first ever Black Student Union at Fitchburg High School. I saw the need for Black voices to be amplified throughout the school, and so I, you know, teamed up with a couple of my friends. And we were just like, you know, we need more representation at our school. Even though our school is very diverse, we have a very big Hispanic population. Um, the black population at Fitchburg High is very scarce. So I thought it would be great to provide a more inclusive space for like students like us. Um, apart from that, I also did a, a youth venture for um, to clean up the city, citywide cleanups and stuff. Um, since like the winter has like slowed things down and stuff like that, so um, hopefully by the spring we'd have more opportunities to really beautify our, beautify our city and make things you know look more appealing and clean, and stuff like that too. That's amazing. That gives me a lot of uh, a lot of hope to see that you know the next generation before they even leave high school that they're so invested in the community and looking exactly. at both the social aspects um, uh, of community and society, but also 
some of the physical aspects of just getting involved in, um, in giving back to the community. Right. So I'm, I'm thrilled to hear um, that you're doing it and so many others are involved. And, and so, you know, seeing a young Fitchburg resident um, talk about kind of you know, big impact, right. um, there's also a lot of growth for you ahead too. And, right. and so you're headed, um, you're, you're in your senior year, you're headed into your final, um, your final summer uh, as uh, before you hit college. So tell right. us a little bit about what comes next for you. Um, I'm really excited about college. I'm excited about the new people. I'm excited about the teachers. I'm most excited about the food. Um, I've currently, I've gone into like Northeastern and WPI and UMass Amherst and UMass Lowell and I'm waiting more decisions. Um, Congratulations. Thank you. That's amazing. Those are Northeastern and WPI and UMass, amazing schools. They're wonderful schools. Um, over, for the summer, I was trying, well, I wanted to go on vacation to, you know, take a break from everything, but due to the recent passing of my grandmother, I'd like to do a 5K fun run for the city to not only, like, to commemorate her legacy for what she did, she was a Fitchwick resident here, but to also raise awareness to ovarian cancer, which was, like, the disease she had, and i just like for everyone in Fitchburg to come together and to, like, fight for, like, you know, a common cause or like it doesn't affect my ovarian cancer doesn't it I wasn't the only family that was affected by this and I know other people suffer from this condition as well so it would just be great to raise awareness and you know possibly donate the money we earn from the fundraiser to towards more ovarian cancer research oh, that's what I plan on doing I, for my well, summer first so sorry to hear about your grandmother but <laughs> it's okay. um, to hear yet again, you know, a young person who reacts to tragedy in that way of, all right, what can we do? Um, and how can we help others who could be going through this? And right. how do we bring people together? And so certainly, uh, I'll be there. Um, <laughs> I, I'm more than happy to participate. And, and, and certainly, you know, our office would love to, uh, love to help amplify that message. But yeah. what, a, what a great uh, message to send of when tragedy strikes. That's, I think that's the Fitchburg way of um, right. finding a way of uh, amplifying and, and giving back. And um, yet again, that makes me so proud um, for our community, um, but also to see just young people that are, are really increasingly, what I see is philanthropic and, and community right. focused. Um, so that's uh, outstanding. You talked about the food in college. You know, it's funny. Everybody, everybody within a month, everybody's complaining about the food, but the food's amazing. And I you mean, know, you, you'll like have four years of someone cooking for you right, for every meal of the day. Exactly. That's, that's There's awesome. nothing to complain about. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, that's amazing. So, uh, tell us, uh, what do you want to go to school for? Um, I okay. This is this is a very hard question because I have a lot of interests. So I, my intended major is to study biomedical engineering. I really like the medical fields. I like helping people. So ha like being, learning an applied science like that would be very useful t for me. But I also want to possibly double major in politics because I feel like, you know, it's another way to help others and to actually make certain things permanent in your society. So I feel like politics plays a really big role in helping other people, and I'd like to be a part of that world too. Yeah, I think that's amazing. Um, I remember the first time you and I talked, you had said, I think the combination was um, attorney, politician, and doctor. Right. Um, <laughs> and uh, I don't know, you're like, I don't know which one of those. and. And my reaction is, is the same every time I hear that, which is you don't have to choose one of those. And exactly. I think so often we try to box people into, uh, you know, yeah. into this. This is what you want to be, and that's the only thing you can be, or, or you can only do one thing. Uh, and I, I look at one of, my, one of my colleagues in the legislature, uh, and I can't um, imagine how many times people have told him he had to pick one or, or he couldn't do all of these things. Right. Uh, and his representative, John Santiago from Boston, who uh, is, a, um, is a captain in the Army, um, is a medical doctor at Boston Medical, and he's a state representative. Uh, <laughs> and he hasn't had a choose. And right. so uh, to you and, and everybody else uh, who's in that same situation, you don't have to choose. You can find your different passions and find right. ways of bringing them together. Exactly. Um, and he's found a way to be a leading uh, a thought leader on, um, on uh, health care and on um, 
and on the COVID pandemic uh, in the legislature. Uh, he's also a doctor within the army. Um, and so, you know, he's found a way to, to use a common theme to hit on different ways of, um, of serving his community uh, right. and his nation. So uh, that excites me for what, what comes next. And we need, uh, you know, I think all too often right now this, and Derek Cruz was talking about this right before, I think there's this, there's two ways you can go with politics. It's you can decide to you know, stick your head in the sand or live in a bubble um, and try mm -hmm. to just tune out all of the, the political noise. Uh, or you can dive in and get involved. Right. And so um, I'm heartened uh, that, that you and so many others are saying, no, now's the time to get involved right. because we need more good young leaders. And, um, you know, I think we need people who are willing to step up and, and serve at every level um, from the city council to the federal government. And, um, and that service takes so many different forms. Exactly, you're right. So um, you're heading into your last summer before collegiate life mm -hmm. uh, and before everybody will then start asking you, what do you want to do when you grow up and how's school going? Yeah. Uh, what are the fun things that you're hoping to do this summer? This summer, I hope to go to the beach, you know, enjoy a max, a massless, you know, environment for the <laughs> first time in a while. Um, I'm also looking forward to just spending time with my friends because I know I won't be able to see them. Um, after school starts and stuff like that since they're moving to different states and possibly different countries So I just want to spend as much time as I can with them. I also want to do you know the fundraiser idea I think that would be really great for the city, you know to bring togetherness I feel like you know have everybody involved like who wouldn't want to fight for cancer like I feel like you know it's really simple comment, you know, good cause. Absolutely. Exactly. And I want to spend time with my little sister more, for sure, before I leave, because she's going to miss me. Fundraiser, family, and fun. That sounds, exactly. that sounds like the, uh, and family. That's, um, that's certainly, I think, the, the right emphasis there. And yeah. um, I'm excited for what the future um, has to hold for you. But I think it's also important, like, take the time and, and enjoy your, um, and enjoy life as well exactly. along the way. So. Um, Jackie Mara, thank you so much for coming onto the show. Thank you for serving as an intern in our office. I'm excited <laughs> to get you into the State House um, you. before you graduate. And, um, you know, thank you for everything you're about to, to do for our, uh, our community. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to this week's uh, Kushmeric Connection. Thank you again to FATV uh, for being such an amazing host. Uh, and from the Workers Credit Union Studio, everybody stay safe, and we'll see you soon.